Hello, little learners. Welcome back to Camp Read A Lot, the place where we read books, sing songs, and of course, keep our brains strong all summer long. I'm so glad that you're here. My name is Miss Lara. Can you tell me your name? All right, shall we start our morning off with a song? I have my friend, Maria the Meal Person, here to help us. You ready, Maria? Okay, let's sing. Good morning, good morning. It's a sunshine kind of day. Come join Miss Laura for some learning and some play. Will we sing a song? Of course we will. Make our brains strong, like super strong. So come along. Yes, come on, friends, for some learning and some play. Oh, hello, Jello. How are you, Caribou? I'm just fine, Porcupine. What's shaken, Bacon? Not a lot, Tater Tot. Is this the end, Smiley Friend? No, it's just the start, Kind Heart. So let me put you away and we'll go through our visual schedule. So this morning we have tons to do. We have a new book that we're gonna read about a chair. Hmm, I wonder what the problem in the story is gonna be. Of course, we're gonna start off with our emotional check-in. We may even have a letter, read a book and do our foundational skills lesson, and then end our day with a project. Today, we're gonna do a collage inspired by our story. So I hope that you stick around with me as we go through our day. Do I? I think I hear something. Ooh, Maria dropped off some mail. So let's see what it is. Put that back here. I can read the first part. It says, Dear Miss Laura. So you remember when we read, we read from the left to the right. So this is the left. This is the right. When you read, start at the left, slide to the right. So let's start reading. Dear Miss Lara, have I got a story for you. I caught my parents painting my old baby furniture pink for my new baby sister, Susie. Ooh, so it sounds like the person who wrote this letter has a new baby sister. Let's read on. This made me feel left out. Oh no, left out. That doesn't sound like a good feeling. Enjoy the book, Love, Peter. That must be the character in our story. Left out, hmm. I wonder what that could mean. I think our friend Rusty the robot has an idea. Let's watch Rusty together. Figuring out feelings featuring Rusty the Robot. Let's rock. Hi, my name is Rusty. I am a robot learning about feelings. What does feeling left out mean? Activating robot research. Feeling left out means feeling sad because other people are doing things without you. Has that ever happened to you? What can we do to feel better? Activating robot research. Take deep belly breaths until you feel calm. Put your hands on your stomach and breathe. When you are calm, you can think of solutions, like talking about how you feel. It takes practice. I'll practice more later. Right now, I have a concert to get to. Heavy metal, of course. Rusty had some good ideas for what to do when you feel left out. And don't worry, we'll talk about it more tomorrow. 
but I found this box that Maria also left, and I think it has some clues about the story we're going to read. We already know that one of our characters is Peter, and that he has a new baby sister. Ooh, here's the story. It's called Peter's Chair by Ezra Jack Keats. What do you notice about the front cover? Who's on there? Looks like a little boy. And he has his hands on his hips, and he's looking at a chair. And look, there's another character on the side. It's a little baby. Hmm. And then and if I look at the back cover, which usually gives me clues about the story, it says, a little sister can mean big trouble. Ooh, I wonder what big trouble they're talking about. Let's see if Maria left me anything else that can help us as we read the story. Ooh, she left some vocabulary cards. Knowing the words in the story is so helpful to being able to understand it. So this is our first word, fussing. In Spanish, fastidiar. And look, that baby in the picture is fussing. That means they're making a lot of noise, having a lot of activity. What's our next word? Muttered. In Spanish is murmur. And it's like this. When you mutter something, that means you don't say it very loudly. It's not a whisper, but you're almost saying it under your breath. Can you practice muttering? Let's see our last word. Rascal. Have you ever been called a rascal? En español es bribón. And look at this child. She's getting a cookie from the cookie jar. Probably not supposed to get a cookie, huh? Rascal means when you're doing something naughty and you're not supposed to. So let's watch the story and listen for those words as they come up. Let's watch together. It's story time. Peter's Chair by Ezra Jack Keats. Retold by Miss Laura. Peter stretched as high as he could. There, his tall building was finished. Oh no! Crash! Down it came. Shh! Called his mother. You'll have to play more quietly. Remember, we have a new baby in the house. Peter looked into his sister Susie's room. His mother was fussing around the cradle. Hey, that's my cradle, he thought. And they painted it pink. Hi, Peter, said his father. Would you like to help me paint sister's high chair? It's my high chair whispered Peter. Peter saw his crib and he muttered, my crib, it's painted pink too. Not far away stood his old chair. They didn't paint that yet, Peter shouted. He picked up the chair and ran to his room. Let's run away, Peter said to his dog, Willie. We'll take my chair, my toys, and a picture of me when I was a baby. Willie got his bone. <coughs> Peter and his dog Willie went outside and stood in front of his house. This is a good place, said Peter, and he arranged his things very nicely and decided to sit in his chair for a while. But when he tried to sit in his chair, he didn't fit. Peter was too big for his favorite chair. Peter's mother called out, Peter, dear, won't you come back to us? We have something very special for lunch. Peter and Willie pretended not to hear. But Peter got an idea. Soon, his mother saw signs that Peter was home. That rascal is hiding behind the curtain, she said happily. 
but when she moved the curtain away, he wasn't there. Huh? Here I am, shouted Peter. That day for lunch, Peter sat in a grown-up chair. He asked his father, Daddy, can we paint the little chair pink for Susie? And they did. The end. I hope that you enjoyed that story, boys and girls. Don't forget that you can check out more stories in your local library and on the Sora app. So right now, we're going to retell the story of Peter's chair, the story we just watched. When we retell the book, we talk about sequence and beginning, middle, and end. And of course, I have a song to help us remember. When I retell a book to a teacher or a friend, I tell the beginning and the middle and the end. First, next, and last are the words that help me out. When I read my favorite book, I tell what it's about. Retelling is so important to loving and reading a story. So let's start. Our book is Peter's Chair. Now, do you remember what happened first? That's right. Peter was stretching really high up and he was trying to build a large tower. And then his little dog Willie came over and knocked his tower to the ground. Ooh, I bet that didn't feel good. And then next, hmm, Peter noticed something. His dad was painting his old high chair. He was painting it pink. How did this make Peter feel? That's right, not so good. He got upset and he decided he was going to run away with his dog, Willie. So he packed his things and he went outside his house. And there, his mother saw him and his mother called out to him, Hey, Peter! Hey, Willie! We're making something special for lunch. Come on inside. But did Peter come in? No. He was a rascal, wasn't he? He did a naughty thing. He had an idea and hid behind the curtain. And that's where his mother found him inside the house. Now Peter decided to try out his old chair that he was saving. Now did it fit him? No, he had grown up. Now the chair was too small. So in the end, Peter decided, I think I'll help paint the furniture so my baby sister Susie can use it. He decided that he wanted to recycle the things that he used to use because they no longer fit him. He didn't feel left out after all. Now retelling a story is so important when you go into kindergarten, first grade, second grade, comprehension, which is the fancy word they call it, is really essential to scoring really high on those tests that you hear about. So to help us remember what the story was about, I have an art project for us. I'm calling it Peter's Chair Collage Art. And these are the materials you're gonna use. Some newspaper or magazine cutouts, some color paper, glue, and of course some scissors. And one thing I didn't write down that you'll need is your imagination. So let's go over to our project place. So here we are. I have my materials set up right here. And this is what the finished project is going to look like. You can see I used some paper and I cut out different things. So I used a backdrop of some magazine cutouts with some words. Because if you notice in the story, as for Jack Keats, the author who writes the words, he actually used a method called collage to create the illustrations or pictures, and that's what I did here. So I used some background with some words, and then I went through different magazines and found pictures that reminded me of the story so I could retell it. So the first thing I found was a picture of a window and some curtains. So I remember that's the window that the mother used to call out to Peter. Then, of course, I found a picture of a chair. And that's what Peter was wanting to hold on to, his chair, right? 
and then some flowers. And I found a picture that kind of looked like our character Peter, a picture of a dog like Willie in this story, although he was a rascal and knocked down those blocks. And then I found some pink paint because that's what they wanted to paint the chair. So let's start making our art together. So I have my scissors and glue and magazine cutouts. Now the first thing I wanna do is at the bottom, I wanna kind of create a pattern. So I'm going to cut out this picture of some towels. Now you can cut it out or you can tear it out. Tearing is really fun too and it creates a different texture. So here I go, and then I have to decide where I want to put it. I think down here at the bottom. That's going to be my pattern that I want to create. In the story, there was a lot of pattern in the illustrations. All right. Now, of course, when I put my glue on, I'm just squeezing a little bit. I'll try to show you what it looks like. That was even too much. You don't want to glob it on only because it takes way too long to dry. So I'm going to put this at the bottom down here. She created some pattern just like I did in my finished product. See where I put some flower stuff at the bottom and then maybe I'll add some more pattern here. Now if you're using old magazines there's lots of different patterns um, that you might be able to find that you can cut out and use with different colors. If you're using newspaper Sometimes those aren't very colorful, so you might create a backdrop of a newspaper and then create a pattern of your own using watercolors or crayons or oil pastels, whatever art materials you have laying around. All right, the next thing I'm gonna do is create my background using some words. Now I told you that you can tear the paper, so I'll show you what you can do to that. It kind of creates this rough edge that I like. So I'm just tearing it up putting it down like this. Of course, I'm gonna put the glue around, all around the edge, around the border. Again, not a whole lot. I'm putting it on the edge. Right there, we're gonna layer as many words, as much background as we can. Ooh, tearing paper. That'll make grown-ups nervous because they don't know what's breaking, what's tearing. And you can just tell them, oh, it's just me making some art, having some fun. Invite grown-ups to make art with you. I think sometimes grown-ups forget the importance of expressing yourself through art. Okay, I'm going to keep going. I have lots of words. Maybe I'll cut a bigger piece here so I can fill up more of the paper. All right. I'm just going to go around again, and I'll add maybe one more piece before we start doing something different here. Oh, look at that. It's starting to come together. Let me add one more larger piece, and I'll show you what it looks like so far. Now, remember, if you don't have the materials handy, all of these episodes are available on the Valley PBS website and now also on YouTube. So you can go back and watch them and follow along when you do have your materials. Okay, this is what my collage is looking like so far. I have some negative space. That means the space where nothing is glued on. But I'm going to add some things. Now, when I was looking through the magazines, I saw this picture of a dog. Do you remember there was a dog in the story, Willie? He was so silly. Ooh, that rhymes, Willie and Silly. When they were running away, he packed his bone. Now, of course, we would never want to run away from home. That's not safe. That's just a story, right? Work of fiction. That means it's made up in somebody's head. Okay, I'm going to add my dog. Where should I put him? Maybe I'll cover some of this negative space here. Ooh, there's my dog. See him? What else do I have? Ooh, let's see. Oh, of course, I have a picture of a chair. Now, in the story, Peter was very sad because he thought that they were going to change everything about his furniture that he used to use when he was little 
really hard growing up, can't it? I remember I had a sister growing up, and I don't think I liked it very much when she played with my stuffed animals. I thought they were mine. It can be hard to share. I'm going to put the chair right there on top of the pattern. So I remember my chair and my dog. And then I found this picture of a family, and it reminded me of the characters in the story. Peter, the baby sister, maybe a little bit too big, but we'll use her anyway, and the mom. So I will cut her out. Now, parents, a good tip is having children cut out these kinds of shapes where they're not lines and they're curves and they really have to think about how they're cutting is really great as they enter kindergarten and beyond. It allows them to focus their attention on what they're doing and practice their cutting skills. All right. So let me put some more glue on here. Ooh, I'm fast. Make squiggly lines with the glue. Ooh, my family is probably gonna fit a little bit off the page here. Okay, this is what it's looking like so far. My Peter's chair collage. Let's see what else I might add. Ooh, maybe I will add some plants. Maybe a table with some plants. That would be nice to have a table and some plants right here. Just for decoration. Just to remind me that it was in the house. Now, do you have decorations where you are? Maybe you do. I try with plants, but I can't seem to keep them alive. So I'll stick with fake ones or paper ones like I'm using today. All right, let me glue that up. And maybe I'll finish up, put the decoration here, by filling in my negative space with some more words and torn paper. And if you're following along, I'd love to see how your art project turned out. Please send over a no to picture by email or send your address here at the address below and they'll put it up here in a second. It makes my whole day to receive notes from you, my students. Okay, we're coming to the end here. I'm going to glue a little bit more and then I'll show you the finished product. Oh, maybe one more down here. Yeah, just one more, maybe down here and up here, and we'll finish it up. Now, Miss Reed Wright, who does our art lessons, she taught me that what artists do is they take a step back and look at their art and see if they're finished. And they also title their art piece. So maybe we'll think of a title here when I'm done. One more, one more out of time. There we go. Okay, here is my finished collage. I hope that if you try this project, you enjoy making it. And don't forget, as you're going through magazines or drawing pictures or you're looking at newspaper, that you think about the story and find pictures that connect to it. Reading comprehension is so important. Let's see, what should we title this? I think I'll title it happy family because that's what they ended up being in the end okay boys and girls looks like we have just enough time to sing our goodbye song and review our letters so here they are let's sing together ready a b c you later d e f g i'm gonna miss ya h i have to go now, J. K, bye bye now. L, M, N. Oh, I had a good time. P, Q, are you gonna miss me? S, T, you are my best friend. V, W. Y, Z. All right, boys and girls, I'll Z you tomorrow. We're going to have some fun. I think Rusty the robot is going to make a special guest appearance. 
We're also going to do a project that's going to involve balance and stability. We're going to make Peter's chair. So if you want to follow along with me, the materials you'll need are a piece of cardboard, some paper, and some tape. And if you want to add decorations, some paint or stickers, really anything you want. And then we're going to turn that chair into a learning chair by making it about beginning sounds. So I hope that you join me tomorrow. Until then, Miss Lara sends you a big squeeze and a big smooch mwah, and reminds you to read and to play and to, of course, use your imagination every single day. Goodbye, friends.